The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week, Lady Ada uses her power of engineering to help you find all the things you need. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search of the Week this week? Okay, so this week, this is actually, I almost got made a mistake in this design, and so I was like, whenever I almost make a mistake, uh, well, if I make a mistake, I usually don't catch it till later, but then I'll do a, a Great Search about it. But this time, I caught it before the error occurred. Which is, um, I have a design that I'm doing um, that uses a uh, slide switch, um, a, a vertical slide switch that is used for power selection. So, oh, hold on. Let me open up the original one. Right, okay. Let me get a computer. Yes, yeah, with a computer. Weird. So, the way that this design works is, you know, I'm using this um, I squared C multiplexer, and I'm moving the signal from a yeah, five volt uh, controller to possibly three volt, five volt or three volt peripheral. So I'm adding like a level shifting thing. But not only am I level shifting the signal, but I'm level, you know, I'm power shifting the the connectors themselves. What will provide power to the individual peripherals on the I squared C bus will also be either three or five volts. So it's not just signal level, it's power level. Um, and there's eight ports. So like, you know, the, the power adds up. I, I'm using the um, AP2112 3.3 volt regulator, this regulator I really love. It has about, you know, 500 milliamps output um, from, you know, three to five volt. Very low dropout as well, which I really like. So um, even if you have three volt in, it won't drop out too much. Um, even at, at fairly high currents. So it's a very good regulator. It's nice and stable. Um, but one of the things to watch for is when you are using a switch for power, not signal. Because again, a lot of people use buttons and slide switches to signal something, you know, send um, a digital signal into a microcontroller or enable pin, or, you know, I showed the micro lipo. It's, it's switching a resistor on the IREF pin of a lipo charger, the amount of current going through it, the amount of voltage going through the switch is very, very small. It's like, you know, maybe even a milliamp, maybe three to five volts. It's, it's apparently pretty much negligible. The issue is when you're doing something like this and you actually want to switch power through. Now, you know, if I was switching more than 500 milliamps, I wouldn't go for a mechanical switch, especially a surface mount one. I would use, um, you know, some PFETs and I would, you know, make a proper, uh, you know, uh, solid state switch, not a mechanical switch. But in this case, I, you know, it turns out I can kind of get away with this um, by doubling up the switch, but also by making sure I'm specking the right kind of slide switch. So let's, um, to the slide switch, just to uh, show what it looks like. You know, it's, uh, you know, I don't have to use the exact same footprint, you know, in, in this case I am, but I want it to be vertical. So I want it to be pointing up you can slide it back and forth easily with your finger. Um, and I will show that this is the same switch here. So I, you know, I particularly like this switch. I found that these are very mechanically strong. Um, they, they're easy to switch with a finger, no matter how big or sausagey or small your fingers are. Um, and they have fairly good availability for voltage and current. But, you know, we talk about jelly bean parts a lot, and you look at, like, tactile switches and connectors. Jelly beans are jelly beans, but you still have to look at the ratings. It's not just because it looks the same doesn't mean it's the same. So uh, let's go to DigiKey. So what we want is a slide switch, and we've, we've looked for slide switches. We've looked for um, side slide, uh, right angle slide switches. We're going to look for, again, a, a top slide switch. Notice the nice um, images. Like, I like new, new, new search style coming into DigiKey with pictures. So we want a slide switch. Uh, we want active. One thing that we, you know, I'm not going to look at because it turns out to not matter so much for this, but um, shorting versus non-shorting also, you know, that's it, just because it looks the same doesn't mean they're all uh, sliding versus non-sliding. Um, okay, we want surface mount. And we don't want right angle, we want vertical pointing up. So that actually gets rid of a lot of design. So now we can look at some images and be like, yeah, you know, this is kind of what we're looking at here. Like this particular looks, this is what I often use for some designs. So 
here's where you want, again, look at the rating. Um, if you're using it for signal, rating doesn't matter because there's almost no power going through it, but we're, we're putting power through. So the first step, I do want to have the voltage be above um, 4 volts because I want to switch 5 volts signal on. And you'll note that you know some of these are 12, some of these are 6, um, but there's also you know this one, uh, which is, looks very nice, but it's, it's only 4 volts. So, sorry, got to go. Can't have 4 volts because we are switching a 5 volt power through. Um, okay, next up, I only want, you know, normally stocking parts because I want to be able to get it. And then let's look at what's available. Um, all right, cool. So you'll see some of these, uh, you know, 100 milliamps, some of them 300 milliamp. We kind of like the 300 milliamp. The only thing is I do want it to be, um, you know, one of the things I'm doing here is it's a DP, DT, yeah, which means there's two independent switches and each one has the contact rating. Uh, I double them up, you see, I parallelize them, which on the board uh, looks like so. And um, that means I can get double the current. Again, the voltage is the same, but the amount of current going through the switch is, is, is essentially doubled. So, um, you can do the same thing for relays, by the way. Just be aware, like with relays, the, you know, in these switches, there might be a slight, you know, microsecond delay between um, connectivity. So just make sure that there's no, there's no risk of, the, of cross connection. Okay, sorry, I was going to look for current. So, you know, I do want to have, um, you know, at least 200 or 300 milliamps per switch because I'm going to double them up to 100 milliamp is a little bit too low because even doubled up that's 200 I really want it to be closer to 400 or 500 and then uh, let's look at what's available by price so there's a couple options here um, so this one's right angle so you know even though it's a kind of a nice switch I'm not going to use that this is a dp3t which I don't want um, this one is, is kind of nice, but it's uh, SPDT, which means I don't get to double up the switch. So actually, I'm going to go back and select only DPDT style. Okay, cool. So now we're talking. So these, you know, they're, they're I don't actually know 100% that they're exactly uh, pad compatible. I have to, you know, I'm going to have to look at more detail in the, in the data sheet to make sure that the switch is fit on the pads and if not adjust the pads and the uh, footprint but there's a couple good options here um you know this one particular ironically you know the cheapest one the one that they have the most in stock is actually pretty nice it's gull wing which means that it has good mechanical stability which i really like like it's there's um let's look at the 360 of this it's got you know the, the pins that go out to the side so mechanically stable um, it's got a nice long actuator. It's pretty simple, but, you know, effective. And then, uh, it's six volt, 300 milliamps rated, which is also nice. And if you look at the data, I will, I'll say one thing, really read the data sheet, by the way, to make sure, because sometimes the contact ratings differ, um, based on the voltage. Like for example, here, um, it turns out you can actually go up to 30 volts DC, but you'll only get 100 milliamps. So just just be aware, like the rating, you know, that contact rating will have, it is actually dependent a little bit not on voltage and current, but you know the uh, the product of the two. Um, so be sure to, to watch out for that, and I'll also tell you um, the electrical life, 5,000 cycles, which I think is fair. This is going to be switched all the time, and um, you know, CNK makes pretty good switches. I've used them before. And you can see, you know, they have a through-hole version. And then this is basically the same switch as the through-hole. You can see they just bend the, le the leads out. Uh, and then check the footprint. And then they also have a version of this switch, um, which is, hold on. Let me find it. Ah, this one. Same switch, but no, not this one. Th not this one. They all look the same. This one. 
It's still uh, DPDT. There's two independent switches, but the leads are bent under. So, um, you know, mechanically not quite as strong, although it's still, you know, the, the pads underneath are, are still long enough, I feel like. Um, but if I need a little bit more space, if this switch ends up being bigger than I expect, um, I can go with this version so it, you know, conserves space on the PCB. Um, but for now, I rather like this one. And it's like fairly inexpensive too. It's, you know, like 40 cents in quantity, um, six volt and 300 milliamps. So, you know, one of the things that I do is whatever switches I use, the, I, I, you know, I try not to have multiple versions of similar looking things with different ratings because I find that that's just accidents are waiting to happen, especially with rework or repair or whatever. Um, so, you know, even if I have boards that are using a slide switch for signal, I would still use this hefty power rated switch just so I only have to stock one item. This is my great search pick. And that's a great search.